If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. Okay, part two of I hope two, potentially three, only because I think that filling the, the loop in this desk is gonna be a major P-I-T-A. Use Google if you don't know what that stands for. Uh, we're gonna have to flip this desk around, I imagine, a few times to get the bubbles out to prime the loop itself. Usually that's easier in a case that's more compact than this. Uh, so yeah, might have our work cut out for us on that one. Uh, but today we're gonna get all of the remaining hardware installed and start planning the loops themselves. I think it's gonna be a dual loop, but we're gonna, they're all gonna be connected, so it's not really a dual loop. You guys know what I mean. Two reservoirs, two pumps, and they're all interconnected. I think that's gonna work. Uh, we have the 9900K that I promised in the pinned comment of part one, which you can check out up here. I told you guys originally that I wanted to go with uh, cheaper options just to prove a point, but that didn't sit well with you guys. And uh, look, I work for you. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what makes you guys happy. 3800X. So, dual systems, we're gonna have Intel and AMD more or less working together in this build. We do have matching motherboards as well, thanks to Gigabyte. So I wanna give you a, a huge shout out here for uh, sending these out pretty quick. So we first off have the uh, X570 Aorus Master, which is beautiful. We got the uh, nice finned heat sink there, direct touch, although you probably don't wanna touch that directly. And uh, yeah, this is a beast of a board. Of course, we do have the PCH fan, which is kind of a shame in X570 boards, but we'll get around that. We can fine tune it with the BIOS updates available. And then we have the other Gigabyte Aorus Master board. This is the Z390 version. So almost matching boards. I'll hold them side by side here so you can see there are subtle differences. Uh, obviously the color scheme is, well, it's similar color scheme, but uh, the colors aren't in the exact same places. So uh, these little, uh, metal plates over the M.2 slots are different. Silver over here and a brushed metal black on this side. Uh, but we have a nice Aorus theme going on here and that's what I ultimately wanted, something that looked like it matched, you know, in the long run, a build that uh, was pretty uniform. So these are gonna be sitting side by side on the desk and then we're gonna be throwing the CPUs into their respective boards. Now, after that, uh, a bit more subjective, we're gonna go with some Zadak memory. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, who the heck is Zadak? Uh, I don't know either, but they said they'll send some kits of RAM and uh, I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm all for it. So we have 16 gigs a piece here. So 16 gigs per system. I think I'm gonna hit them up though for an additional 16 a piece. So we'll have 32 per system. Although the streaming rig in reality doesn't need much RAM at all. Uh, it would just look better to populate all four dim slots in each board. I'm just gonna be picky because Everything else about this system is overkill AF, so why not? We're also gonna be installing the EK Coolstream PE360 triple radiators. We're gonna have two of these, remember, running side by side in the middle of the desk. We're gonna install the uh, EK fans that we were sent as well with them, so we're sticking with an EK theme. Uh, and then we're also going to be installing the graphics card from Power Color that, this is not the graphics card, this is right here. Uh, that comes pre-fitted with an EK water block. This is a sick looking card. We're gonna install the vertical mount as well so that we can see it facing upright in the desk. And, uh, and then we'll install the capture cards in the other system. So basically we're gonna install everything we can save the tubing because again, that's gonna be a very difficult challenge. And then lastly, our EK velocity water blocks. This one obviously is for Intel systems and this one is for AMD systems. I think this is also compatible with AM4, which is great. That's what we need for this build. Uh, so we're gonna get the CPUs installed, fit the water blocks, install radiators, install graphics card, install RAM. Yeah, like I said, pretty much everything except for the tubing. Let's get started. All right, look, you could have gone with a 3700X for this build. I chose a 3800X because I'm a baller. And if you're a baller, I suggest you uh, spend more money just for the heck of it. Not really gonna get much of a performance bump with 3800X. So we're gonna lift that socket level. You gonna drop her straight in like so. You getting all that, Nate? Oh yeah. And my finger's gonna get in the way for a second. Boom. Yeah, it's hard work. I'm already sweating. It was a joke. It's a joke, people. This isn't hard. I imagine it will get pretty difficult though. Look at that beauty. 
Mm, and this has RGB support baked in. That easily adds like $500 to the value of this build. Okay, I think I'm doing this correctly. We'll find out in about 10 seconds. All right, for thermal paste application, pretty cool. This uh, little water block kit comes with thermal grizzly paste. So, okay, I think this is the way we've modified the way we're installing this a few times. I'm not referencing the manual, which could be a really, really bad mistake. Now for her boot drive, we're gonna go all out here. This is a, I believe two terabyte. PCIe 4 Corsair MP600. Now it would be super balls to the walls if we had two MP600s running in RAID 0. Uh, but the thing is, this is gonna be Lisa's system. Probably not a good idea to be screwing around with her stuff. Next up for this platform is the Zadak memory. Ooh. For those wondering, this is uh, I think a 3600 megahertz kit. Um, oh. No, this is 4133 megahertz. Well, that's freaking fast. Okay, and you can see it says first, it's gonna be A2 and B2. Dual channel, of course, channel A, channel B. And I'm gonna drop them in. Now that would be dim number one. Ooh, motherboard almost fell off the desk. That would have been catastrophic. And a dim number two. Up next, C390. We're gonna place it right here. We're gonna basically do the exact same thing we just did uh, for the AM4 platform, just for the i9 this time. We're gonna kind of skip through this part so it's not so redundant. Mmm. Mmm. Thermal paste app round two with Intel. Yeah. Just gonna give it a little more just to make sure that stuff's covered. And dropping the blog down. Now for our product sponsor, we have a T-Force Cardia Zero Z330. This is a Gen 3 by 4 SSD. Uh, so it's not gonna, it's not a Gen 4 drive, so it doesn't really make sense to put this in our uh, X570 system. And Z390 doesn't support Gen 4, so this is perfect for that. And remember, this is gonna be our streaming platform here. So we wanna be able to access the system fairly quick. That's where an M.2 and NVMe more specifically comes in. This is a really fast drive. And we've got it linked below if you wanna check it out. So uh, big thanks to uh, Team Group for sending this over and sponsoring this part. And we're gonna install it again over the RGB cable from the block. Now I've got the 16 gig kit of Zadak memory again. This time for the Z390 platform. And we're gonna install like so. So now I've got both systems, both kits of RAM, both CPUs, both water blocks, and both uh, NVMe drives in the desk canal. So there's a huge fan hub underneath this uh, little metal shield that I just removed. And uh, that connects all eight of these Lee and Lee fans. They're all powered by a single SATA power cable, uh, and then they can be controlled via PWM with this uh, four pin header here. So we'll run this into presumably Lisa's system. This will be the one that I imagine is gonna be on the most. It wouldn't make sense to turn on just the streaming system. And then we'll plug this into the power supply on her side of the desk. The kit we're gonna use is a cable mod kit, and I'm choosing that because we do have these uh, pretty sturdy, PCIe cover bracket things that I kind of wish weren't here, but I don't really want to cut through them. This is a pretty expensive case, so uh, no cutting if possible. All right, and then we're gonna pull the card in. I do have the display port cable already in there, and the reason why is because it's like, near impossible to get this cable routed uh, through the, again, the little shields for the Rear slot covers, a little bit of finesse. Lock that card in place. Now these here are just thumb screws that hold uh, basically the whole motherboard tray to the desk. I loosen these so that it'd be a bit easier to wedge this in there. But uh, I think we're good now. And then uh, Nate, you can show them a top-down view. Oh yeah, looking good. All right, so we have cable managed about as much as we can. I took out these two middle fans. I thought they looked a bit weird, especially um, with these uh, 360 mil mounts here. I just, I don't know, I like to have a little bit of open grill space. Although I'm not sure how dust is going to um, fare with nothing back here, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, then we've got these cables tucked away, hidden as much as we can. And we've got the dual USB 3 cables plugged into this board along with the front IO and all that stuff and uh, the graphics card installed vertically, or I guess in this case, horizontally. And this side a bit more clean because it's more stripped down, but we still got cables running in. USB 3, front IO, HD audio, the USB, uh, not the USB, the LED uh, cable here, fan cable there. So yeah, 
fairly clean. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, install the 360 mil rads along with these Vardar 3X, sorry, X3M DRGB fans. All right, so we're gonna lay the radiator facing downward. And then uh, coming from the top here, Nate, you can see we can secure the rad to uh, the bracket through the back. So we've got two EBJ P2 power supplies. These are cables from Cable Mod. I've actually used these in previous builds, but I think they're gonna work really well with the color scheme in here. So you can see everything for the most part is either black or silver. Uh, and then we have small bits of white accents. These uh, little rubber vibration mounts on the Vardar fans are white. It's really the only white in the system. Uh, so I think it's gonna look really nice when we pair these cables with just a bit of white mixed in. Uh, so that'll offset the white, and uh, this will look really good when the RGB LEDs are shining around them. Uh, we have the silver and the silver cable combs for the silver accents, and then uh, primarily black uh, for these, uh, especially for the 24 pin here. I have the fan facing inward because I don't think there's much breathing room, if any at all, turning it the other way. So I'd rather play it safe. Okay, Nate's gonna show you guys what it looks like. Now kind of ignore this. I'm gonna try my best to clean this up as much as I can, although, it's, I mean, we have quite a bit of excess cable, especially in that 24 pin, because it's literally just going from here to here. Uh, but overall, I think the color scheme definitely works. We somehow managed to fit these cables underneath this tray with that small amount of space. I'll try my best to get this to turn a bit better, but uh, I don't think that's a bad look at all. So I have a serious headache and uh, I apologize for pushing this to a three-parter, but I think we made a lot of progress. We've we've cable managed as we've gone. We've tried to clean up around the workstation. And uh, I think all we have left to do, apart from installing the second power supply and getting those cables routed, uh, is power up these fan cables. I'm gonna get uh, a fan splitter, basically one PWM cable into three. We'll plug all three of these into that. And then same on this side. We'll tuck these underneath as well. You can see we've already hidden the uh, LED wires, those are pretty much all tucked in underneath the uh, motherboard or beside it. Um, so those are cleaned already. And then once that's taken care of, we can install the pump res combos and then both systems should be up and running. So uh, without further ado, I give you part two. I think, uh, yeah, I think it looks good. I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're done with today because it's been a long day, but uh, It'll be worth it in the end. I think this will be a really, really cool overkill build. Definitely this side here. This side's super overkill. And it looks a little messy right now, but uh, I love the color scheme. I love the cables. I love everything going on with this. I think this is gonna be one of my favorite builds. Like I said, well, it's really two builds in one. But anyway, my name is Greg. If you guys like this video, subscribe, leave a like, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for building with me. That's a good one. Seems fitting.